Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. A massive warm welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. How are you all doing today? I'm going to be straight with you all now and say I think I'm officially a little bit jaded with the whole madness that typically surrounds CES in Vegas. Why? Because I think I'm just getting bored of bigger and better cameras, bigger and better screens, whether they're OLED or foldable or rollable. It's all starting to disappear in a sea of sameness. And so much tech is just a solution looking for a problem at the event. And don't get me started on the live demo fails of disobedient robots, smart nappies or diapers for my US listeners, or drink data cups that will tell me when I need to take a glass of water. Or there's even a device at CES I've seen that will take a breath sample and tell you what kind of food you need based on the data that it produces. If you need a $200 device to tell you when to change your baby's nappy, when to drink water or when to eat, you, my friend, have no hope. But where has this come from? I mean, after four years of covering the event, I think I'm just getting frustrated of everyone being distracted by shiny technology when we should be looking to technology to solve real problems and solve them for businesses and also make our lives easier in the process too. But thankfully, I've tracked down Richard Stokes at CES and he's the CEO and founder at Winston Privacy who have just unveiled a new safeguard against the surveillance economy at CES 2019. At last, real solutions to real problems. Essentially, Winston Privacy is a, is a comprehensive internet security solution with a mission to protect data on all devices, including computers, tablets, phones and smart home devices. So Winston is aiming to reset the default of how privacy works by operating on a distributed private network with proprietary software to ensure that users are safe from pop-up ads, surveillance and hackers. But enough from me. Buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Vegas so we can speak with Richard Stokes, CEO and founder of Winston Privacy at this year's CES. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Well, thanks, Neil. Appreciate you having me. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Winston Privacy. And we are a hardware company based out of Chicago in the United States. So my background is I spent about 14 years in the ad tech uh, world, but I left the industry based on the alarming invasions of privacy that I saw developing uh, back as early as 2017. And I didn't want my kids growing up in a world where everything about them from cradle to grave was tracked and used against them just to turn a profit. So I created Winston, and Winston is the world's first plug and play privacy device for your everyday average non-technical user. And that is a topic that really resonates with me because I mean we're both men of a certain age where we grew up in a time where a whole childhood and the time where you're making mistakes and everything that you do is completely offline isn't it? Whereas now kids are growing up where everything that they do, everything that they share online is all online and sold to the highest bidder isn't it? That's right and it's it's not even so much you know the fact of the things that we know that we're sharing um, as bad as that is, it's the two or 300 companies that are looking over our shoulders invisibly in the background and secretly recording and selling this data. Uh, and, and they're re- real problems. So Winston Privacy helps users protect their family and browsing from spying and identity theft with one easy-to-install product. But can you just tell the listeners a little more about it, what, it, what Winston Privacy is, and what makes it different from other solutions out there? Sure. Well, you know, privacy software has been around for about 20 years now, but what are the problems with privacy? That's what we asked ourselves as we were developing this. And our answers, um, what came down, privacy isn't easy. It's not convenient. And even if you're highly technical and you put countermeasures in place, these solutions that are out there aren't really all that effective. And I say that from a position of authority from being on the other side and seeing um, the many different ways that this data was gathered and collected. So when people think about privacy, they think VPNs and ad blockers. Well, Google and other companies can see you right through a VPN because VPNs don't provide any privacy protection. What they do is they encrypt your internet and change your IP address 
but they do nothing to address the many redundant forms of tracking. They're also slow and a pain in the butt to use, and a lot of them are logging and selling your data anyway. I mean, even Facebook runs a VPN, and that should tell you something. Ad blockers, that's another thing we hear about, well, they strip visible ads, and they only work on a single, app, a single application, that's your browser. So we're different for a few reasons. Uh, the first is we encrypt all of your internet activity in your home on every single device you own. Everything from PCs to your doorbells are protected. Um, second, it's fast. We reduce data usage by about 45%, and as a result, page load speed is double on average. Uh, third, it's easy. Our goal is to maximize compatibility with most websites. So for the most part, you don't even know it's there. And then finally, it's comprehensive. You know, we take care of the hard stuff. Everything from IP anonymization, encryption, artificial intelligence cookie blocking, even disabling advanced you know, browser and audio fingerprinting that allows companies to track you even through incognito mode. So it does a lot. Now, for many people listening, CES is all about voice tech, large bendy, foldable screens and TVs, but not necessarily software that protects users. However, I've recently spoken with the guys at Goya Move, which is the first ever mobile application that's aimed to assist parents in managing their children's screen time by setting uh, step goals. And that was at CES too. But I've got to ask, I mean, what brings you to CES and why is attending an event like this so important to you guys and what you do? Well, after over a year of development and the successful completion of our engineering trials, um, we're formally announcing our launch, and we're now accepting orders from the general public. Wow. So is, is this your first CS as well, then, I assume? And if it is, I mean, what, what is the secret to getting your voice heard at such a huge event and making sure that that message, that launch, gets heard by as many people as possible? It, it is our first CS. Um, our secret is not to compete directly with everyone else trying to be heard. So we arranged for a private uh, booth for one-on-one -on -one interviews and demos with journalists before the show. And this allowed us to stand out from the crowd um, and, you know, get our name out in the press before everybody else did. So just for anyone listening that's actually in Vegas right now as they're listening to this podcast, I mean, where is your booth at CES? And for anyone that can't attend the event, what is the main event that you're delivering to visitors and in, in those many back-to-back -back meetings that you've probably got booked in this week? Yeah, so surprisingly, we're not exhibiting on the floor this year. You know, we just completed our engineering trials. We weren't sure if we were going to be ready for CES, and we didn't want to put something out there before we were ready to sell. Yeah. So we decided to go with the private booths and the one-on-one -on -one interviews. So really, our message is for everybody, you know, privacy is no longer something you have to live without. There are options now. We made it cheap, effective, and easy enough for the average person to take control back of their personal data from the tech companies. It's, the power is now yours if you want it. And what kind of feedback have you had from people that are coming to see you over there? And are you noticing a real increasing awareness around the scale of the problem that you're tackling with Winston Security? Yeah, well, the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. I've never been part of something that has tapped into you know, such a raw nerve, such passion before. So it's really exciting. You know, in terms of like awareness, uh, that's definitely grown since April uh, with, the, with the break of the Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal. I think that was the wake-up call for a lot of people in the U.S. Since we started measuring, for instance, um, we've seen a 400% increase in VPN usage in the U.S. So, you know, one of the things that we're working on now is educating people on more effective solutions. Um, I think a lot of people are using VPNs because they, they believe um, somewhat inaccurately that it's doing something to protect their privacy. It is an effective security countermeasure because of the encryption. So it does prevent, um, you know, a hacker at Starbucks from looking over your shoulder. Uh, but in terms of privacy, it does nothing to stop, you know, the big tech companies and even the little tech companies from gathering and collecting all your personal data. So here we are right at the beginning of 2019, and obviously you've just launched and you've got so much to shout about at the minute. But what are the biggest challenges and equally opportunities in this space for you guys? Well, for us personally, the biggest challenge is, you know, we're working on hardware. Right, so developing and delivering a physical product is vastly different than selling software, where you can just push some code out and it goes out to you know millions of desktops around the world. Um, so for us, it's actually building a, a quality product with a repeatable supply chain and getting that price point down to a level where this becomes affordable. In terms of opportunities, 
boy, there are so many in terms of what we're doing. You know, we see Winston as a platform. Um, first, uh, users are taking control back of the personal data. That's great. But beyond that, you know, there are so many areas for us to expand, you know, in terms of even things like content and blocking. Once we have the Winston network and it's more or less global, that allows us effectively to circumvent a lot of the artificial um, barriers that exist on the internet. Um, for instance, if you're in Europe and you want to access Netflix, um, that's something that we can provide with our technology. So, you know, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities, and we're just in the process of figuring out what those are and navigating through them. So, like I said a few moments ago, you've probably booked in with back-to-back -back meetings in booths at CES. But I've got to ask, if you do get any downtime at the end of your shift in the city that doesn't sleep, is there anything that interests or excites you that you want to just nip out and check out or any particular topic that interests you while you're there? You know, unfortunately, my schedule didn't allow me to stay at CES. I'm really interested in the foldable displays. Yeah. I think that's nifty. Um, you know, but for the most part, a lot of the tech is a little bit me too, I think. So um, just seeing the new and different types of technology that are out there, for me, that's the big draw at CES. So once you get back home exhausted after seeing no natural sunlight for five days, what will be next for Winston Security? Because we often hear about what happens on the show floor, but what happens post CES? Well, we're working primarily right now on scaling to become more efficient at supply chain. So they call it hardware because it's hard. You have to put a lot of effort into testing, scaling, and making a quality product. Um, you know, we, and we know that even though right now we're the only option, we have to win people's trust and earn their business. So, you know, aside from scaling supply chain, we're working very hard on making the network uh, even faster than it is and on building new features into it. Um, so, you know, that's our focus. We're just putting our heads down and working on making a great product even better. What well, a huge thanks for taking a few moments off the show floor there and coming to speak with me today. But if there is anyone listening at home that, or even in Vegas, where can they find you and where can anyone uh, get in, find out more information about what you're doing and also maybe even contact a member of your team if they just want to carry on that conversation that we started today? Yeah, you can do all the above. Just navigate your browser over to winstonprivacy.com. Uh, the traffic that has come to us from CES coverage was higher than expected, so we're currently back ordered for a couple of months. So if listeners are interested in getting a Winston unit, uh, now is the time to sign up. Now, it was less than two weeks ago that many people were preparing for the beginning of the year with the best intentions and vast amounts of optimism. Traditionally, the cliched social media post that begins New Year, New Me is typically followed by exercise more, lose weight and get organised. However, this year, I've noticed a lot more awareness around screen time, addiction to technology and privacy. So I was quite hopeful when CES started that we're going to see a lot of this sensitivity and maybe a change in mood. But of course, in mainstream media, most of us have just seen foldable TVs, bigger screens, etc. So I'm really genuinely thrilled to have found you over here and got to share your story. And it's a real problem and you're, you're providing a real solution. But more than anything, just a big thank you for spending that time with me today to talk about it. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. Richard has restored my faith in CES with his comprehensive online privacy solution in one device. And he did this by launching it at the Consumer Electronic Show in Vegas. A simple hardware device that sits between a user's home modem and router, which enables Winston to protect online browsing and identity by scrambling and encrypting internet activity through a constantly shifting decentralized network that's actually built on Ethereum. And that is much, much more my kind of thing. Because in an increasingly growing surveillance economy, I love Winston's mission to help consumers protect their personal data from corporations, government entities and third party data mining companies. And just off the podcast and at the show, Richard also said at CES, while technology has given way to important advancements in our society, the hard reality is that we now live in a surveillance economy where everyone's personal economy, from their Amazon cart to their Spotify playlist to specific locations they visit in their hometown, is essentially for sale to the highest bidder. Food for thought indeed. But enough of me. 
I'm going to pass the virtual microphone over to you. What are your thoughts on today's podcast, our conversation and Winston privacy, and of course, this year's CES? What excites you? What frustrates you? What annoys you? Anything at all. Let's open Pandora's box together and right a few wrongs along the way. Remember, my Twitter and Instagram are the same name, at Neil C. Hughes. And you can email me directly at techblogwriter at outlook.com or pop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. But now that I've found a real solution to a real problem at CES, I'm waiting for an achievement to unlock. Oh, there it is. (laughs) On that note, I'm going to walk off into a virtual Nevada sunset and say thanks for listening. And until next time. Don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.